Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee for meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, the new website <clears throat> nycweathernow.com for New York City weather, and of course ssstormchasers.com. And we are literally, I guess, chasing this storm to try to figure out what's going to happen down the road. This is the water vapor imagery loop of Hurricane Matthew. Uh, there's a missing frame there in the middle, and that's why you see that little uh, black uh, frame that comes up. Uh, following the eye, which continues to be <clears throat> pretty well developed, in the official movement on the uh, from the hurricane center was north northwest. I'm sorry, but looking at the eye, uh, it looks like it's moving uh, no better than west northwest and possibly even just north of due west. Still, uh, it's just about to 74 west longitude, and it spent the whole day making a loop down here, and it's just basically stationary. But now on the move, there hasn't been a reconnaissance aircraft in this. Uh, for a, a number of hours, so uh, the, sat the pressure is being done by satellite estimates. So we're not going to really know what the true intensity is until uh, a, a recon gets in there. Probably sometime. I'm going to guess they'll have they'll send one out tomorrow morning. But uh, this is probably going to move northwestward now. Uh, and of course, we've got Jamaica here and the south coast of Haiti here, where hurricane warnings are in effect. Now, here's the uh, infrared view, and you can see the eye pop disappears, but then redevelops. It's very, very small. Uh, it's definitely holding on to its Category 4 status. And I, as I said, when the recon plane ever, get, when it gets there again, it may find um, something a little stronger. Here's the wider view, and you can see the trough here. This is the uh, big upper low that's been sitting in the uh, Ohio Valley. And you still see these clouds that are moving up uh, from south to north. So the trough is extending its arm down and creating this weakness that should pull Matthew northwestward. So we're just kind of waiting for that <clears throat> a track to get really established here. Uh, it's going to be a very, very slow process because it's going to take another uh, two to three days for it to eventually get up uh, into the Bahamas. And here's the eastern view. So you can see that big upper low and just how um, large it is in terms of its circulation. It's not particularly intense from the standpoint of the rain it's been producing. Uh, this one last spoke here is going through now uh, through uh, the northeast, but the radar doesn't really look all that impressive. But it's this trough that's making that initial pull of the uh, hurricane uh, going northward. Now, I want to take a look at the latest, the, what we call the spaghetti plots, uh, these are all the hurricane models uh, that a whole bunch of different hurricane models. And you can see they, they, they take, they actually do miss the east coast of Jamaica, except for three of the models that go the furthest left. Um, but the cluster of models uh, takes it to just right off the south coast of Haiti and then over eastern Cuba and they some of them start to diverge a little bit here uh, towards we move into the Bahamas. The track is generally north northwest, and then it kind of turns northwestward. But the spread starts to get wider. I will point out that uh, a number of the models that you see up here do take it out to the northeast from the North Carolina coast and then offshore. And in fact, these particular models keep it well offshore, um, but there are others that keep it much closer. So I honestly, you know, I, I don't think I've seen too much here that would suggest to me that uh, I'm going to, you know, start feeling good about any kind of specific forecast because of the fact that um, I'm still worried about um, model volatility that we've seen lately. Now, we're going to look at the new GFS model. And by the way, I want to point out um, because of my own logistics, uh, with regards to my uh, travel times and so on, I would love to be able to do the European model, but it comes at a time when I'm generally on the road and I don't have access um, to uh, record the European model. So that's why I haven't been, really been able to spend uh, any kind of time with it. Um, okay, so here's, here's the GFS, uh, and it takes it between 
uh, Jamaica, and it actually touches the south coast of Haiti. The intensity on this model is not good. Uh, it's been way off from the beginning. A lot of these models have really just, uh, in fact, all of them um, did, missed on the intensity of making this a Category 5 hurricane. Crossing eastern Cuba, then it takes it right along through the uh, central and eastern Bahamas, and I'd probably it's going to be a Category 3 or 4 hurricane when it does so. Then continues northwest until it starts to make the turn, and now, uh, it at least on this particular run, it has joined the um, European, it has more of the Europeans look that it, where it winds up being out to sea. Um, I don't want to unequivocally say at this point that that is a, a locked scenario because, again, uh, we, we've experienced so much vo model volatility, not just in the long range, but even in the short range, that uh, it makes me very nervous. And I'll show you why I'm, I'm still a little nervous about this. Even though it does take it out and it does make it uh, head take it hooks it back in over Nova Scotia and eventually into Newfoundland, um, I do have a, a couple of um, uh, of folks that uh, w watch from up there and are on my Facebook page, so they're um, going to be thinking about this when they uh, see it. But uh, this would be obviously a miss for us. Uh, produces some rain, but that's more in line with the trough that's coming through from the north. And and I want to show you that. Um, to, to, to give you a perspective of um, what's going on aloft because nothing has really changed from that angle of it and that's the most important uh, angle of all so I'm going to put the upper air on and what the GFS does today and there's that western trough that comes out now the timing on the model is faster on this run today by a, a good 24 hours. So what happens is it misses this trough going negative. So you don't have that phase like you did earlier today. I'll just jump back to the afternoon run of the model and you can see the difference here. Uh, this has a phased look and brings it uh, just offshore and northeastward into New England uh, because of the timing. Um, it is not the case on this run. Uh, the, um, this was this afternoon's run where it was a little less phased, but still brought it into southeastern New England. And now on this particular run, as we go backwards, you can see that they stay completely separate. They do not phase at all. So if that is the case, or actually I shouldn't say that they don't phase at all. The phase occurs well out to the northeast by the time it gets to Nova Scotia and lifts up to Newfoundland. So uh, this is a further east run. It's uh, matching up with the European run from yesterday. And again, <clears throat> the key is going to be that this trough here and how sharp and how deep it is and whether it, uh, it progresses toward the East Coast in time to pick this system up. I'll go to the wider U.S. view because it, we also have to look at what's going on in the Pacific Northwest with this. And I'll back it up. All right, so you can see that system is very deep there uh, into the Rockies. It lifts up above North Dakota over toward Lake Winnipeg. And here you have the trough as it comes on out. And, you know, it, it's just not as well developed as it was on the prior runs. Now, I'm just going to, I want to put another caution flag up because we've se I've seen it happen before where, you know, models show something early on in the long range and then they kind of lose it when we get into mid range only to come back to the original solution in the long range. Now we do have this ridge here uh, that rebuilds. It's not it's not a very sharp ridge, but it does build back up into the Rockies. Uh, but uh, it, based on the speed of this system coming out and where it's positioned, it would not be able to phase with this trough. Now, when, when they're tilted like this northwest to southeast, we call that a negative tilt. And that is usually a sign um, of, uh, st of strength and energy in the atmosphere, as opposed to when you have it northeast, southwest, which is what we call a positively tilted trough, and that's a sign of, of, of a trough that's progressive. In other words, it just moves along from west to east. So it's when they lift up from south to north like that that you have to be careful. So the, 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 the ultimate key is going to be the fact that this trough um, is either phased or unfazed. And on this particular run, uh, it is unfazed, and that would mean that we would get uh, a miss. But uh, 
we had two days ago where it showed a hurricane moving up the coast. Then we went to a bunch of runs where it went out to sea. Then it went back to having one near the coast. Now we're back to being out to sea again. And we're still in day seven and eight of the long range uh, period. So let's uh, leave it at that. And we will, of course, uh, look at the other models that come through through the overnight. And we'll be back tomorrow afternoon uh, with the next run of, of, uh, of models. In the meantime, I would just stress that we're still in the watching it phase. We're not in the um, phase yet where we're going to make a final forecast. Uh, I would say that, you know, you would probably have to start certainly lean to the idea that this is not going to be an issue for us as that it'll get kicked out to sea. Um, but I, I can't really at this point unequivocally say that that is the case. I want to see at least another day or two of model runs before um you know, we kind of try to at least uh, reach a verdict on all this. So don't forget ssstormchasers.com, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, and nycweathernow.com. And by the way, you can also download my weather app and subscribe to my forecast. Um, uh, that's also available, too. If you're on my Facebook page, you can just click the Use App button, and it'll take you to the download.